Welcome back. It's still Ballots 2023 coming to you from the stables of Plus TV Africa. And expectations are sky high as a Nigerians wait at who will be the next president and, of course, uh, uh, members of the National Assembly. And uh, we'll start the show uh, from Kano. We have our correspondent um, standing by, uh, Enoch, uh, who will be giving us a live update at the Collation Center. We'll also be going to Kaduna in a moment. Uh, but let's take... Uh, Let's take Joseph Hayab, right? Or who do we have um, standing by? All right, let's take Enoch Steven. Uh, let's uh, get more update from Ken at this particular time. Thanks for joining us, Enoch. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So um, currently, I'm at the Kano State Coalition Center here in the INEC headquarters in Kano. And um, the coalition has been postponed to 2 o'clock because we're still expecting results from different local government areas. Currently, we have the results from Makoda, Rumingado, Kibia, and Garumala. Yes, so uh, we're just patiently waiting for the results to come from other local government areas. And by 2 p.m., the um, INEC official announced that the results will start. So uh, the question will start. I have um, Abdul Ghaffar Oladimiji, who is a domestic election observer here, who um, would like to share his uh, thoughts with us. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, can you share a with us? How are the election been so far as an um, as an election observer? Well, the election has been uh, fine. Uh, I would like to say at this stage, from our observation, that basically there were challenges. Yes, there were challenges. But materials did not get into most of the places. Materials did not get job time. There were issues of logistics. Like we do some situations where some of our dogs that kind of did uh, carried out picketing, saying they were not going to work, said they were being paid. Uh, but what is interesting here, yeah, or what uh, really made it a bit impressive, is IDEC was able to respond quickly and uh, mobilize the resources to address most of these issues. Transporters uh, mobilized to make sure at the end these materials got there. Uh, pulling it, we are supposed to start at eight, open at 8 30, but in some places, pulling did not open at 9 30, 10, 30, 11, or 11 p.m. Uh, people uh, were there waiting. But the good thing there is that uh, when INEC eventually arrived, they made sure that uh, people were able to exercise their franchise. All right. Until the early hours of this morning, from the reports we're getting from some of our observers in some areas, people were still casting their votes. And uh, most of the results. We are not uh, being confined at many hours of this morning. And that is why when we arrived at the INEC headquarters this morning, we found out that most of the results are yet here and pollution has not started because of the reasons I've just cited. But in the whole world, it has been peaceful compared to what we used to know in the past. Uh, we, we, there were minimal issues of violence compared to the past. We are, there were ballots of snatching, ballot stopping, and things like that. And again, the issue of uh, Money politics. This time, from the reports we are getting, it was minimal. And we saw government agencies like the uh, 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 Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, agents from the ICPC, police and uh, undercover, yes. uh, officials from the DSS uh, under, undercover, where they went around and they were really, really in charge. And so we saw money politics less, less, less having a, an influence in kind of politics the way it used to be in the past. So I think so far so good. INEC, uh, you must commend them for the job they've done for Trooper. And the security agencies also you must give them good so far. They were from the result we gathered, the no level of partisanship was very minimal compared I've been following elections in Kano since twenty eleven. Uh, I think this time is minimal. Yeah. I think so. Are you confident in the whole process? Yeah, we have to be confident because you see, you see, when we said it's okay is this is the first time we are adopting this procedure. So ordinarily, you wouldn't have expected INEC to have performed this better because you would have expected excuses like uh, this is new, the procedure is new, the use of beavers is new, and things like that. But it is new, but at least to a certain level, we know that there were no failures here and there. We saw situations where some machines refused to start. Mm -hmm. We saw situations where even those that were supposed to operate the machines were not conversant with the operational methods of the machines. We saw situations where uh, even the machines were partially malfunctioning. But what we are saying here is INEP was able to respond 
to these emergencies. Mm -hmm. So being the first time we're, we're using the BIMAS accreditional procedure and they've been able to do this, uh, perform this fair, I think if we build on the process, it can only get better. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, that's uh, coming from a domestic election observer who said the election process went um, fine, good, although there were some new little issues with logistics, but uh, by and large, it has been a smooth process. So we are still here waiting for results from um, 40 local government areas. Yes, we have only four here, and we are patiently waiting for the collision to start at 2 p.m. All right, um, Enoch, uh, just uh, before we'll let you go, uh, I know the elections are over as per voting, uh, the voting process specifically, and residents are waiting with bated breath to know uh, which way or which direction it actually pans out. But from, um, aren't you want to know um, how the people are reacting this month? I'm sure you've been able to speak to residents um, across Mkano Metropolis. Uh, what's the polls like? Okay, so around the city, people are still, you know, not outside yet. Most people are still in their homes. The road was very, very scanty. You know, we had free access. There was no, no hold up, no, you know, um, issue on the road. So most people were still indoors. We had few people going to church this morning. Very few people going to church this morning, and you just in their homes waiting for the result to be answered and um, to, the result to be out. So I went to a particular area around farm center and i spoke with some most of them were very happy and they they felt like their their votes counted this time all they are waiting for is just the result to be out most of them are happy and they are uh, you know the places where we had issues you know the issues were resolved and um, votes are coming and people are just waiting patiently for the results all right thank you so much uh, enoch steven our correspondent from the ancient city of kano bringing us up to speed as regards uh, the election process there thank you so much uh, once again enoch thank you very much for having me. and of course i will get back to you uh say from 2 p.m when um, the collision center will be back open thank you all right, I will slide on next to Kaduna State. We have the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, uh, the state chapter that is uh, Reverend Joseph Amhayab. Uh, Joseph Amhayab, thanks for staying with us, Reverend. Thank you for having me and good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Uh, so far, I've been looking at the place of uh, you know, the religious uh, institution and, of course, uh, the leaders in the role of um, the nation's democracy. But so far, so good. Uh, the elections, uh, the voting process ended yesterday, although some uh, parts of the country are still uh, you know, voting as we speak. But if you were to uh, rate uh, the religious leaders in their actions, um, in actions, and of course all they've been doing before the polls, how far would you say they've been able to you know, make uh, eligible voters uh, you know, know their right and come out uh, to the polls um, yesterday? How far did they go? How would you rate them? I, I must say that uh, despite some of the interpretation of the actions and words of many religious leaders, the success or the general participation of this election can be uh, accredited or can be credited to the effort of religious leaders because religious leaders long during the post of registration did a lot of awareness in churches and in mosques encouraging people to come out in mass and ensure that they get their voters cut. After that, religious leaders proceeded to help them ensure that they collect their cards. As a pastor and the leader of the church in Kaduna, I know we wrote letters, we make announcements in every meeting we have to repeat and encourage everyone to go and get his peace. And then when it was time for election, I also know the role religious leaders play in encouraging everyone to ensure they go out and vote. They go out and vote because it is their civil right. And I know that uh, Muslim brothers also did exactly the same. So religious leaders have really played a role. But having said that, I do also know that uh, some utterances and actions of some religious leaders could also have uh, affect this uh, politics and election negatively because they were more on the part of instigating, inciting, and saying things that are not instead of helping the people to just wake up and do what is their civil right. Uh, for those who did that, it's unfortunate, but that is why we're human beings. We'll have others who are mobilizing, and encouraging, promoting unity, talking about peaceful election. And we'll also have others who probably look at it differently and they're trying to champion sentiment, champion what is not. But whatever role people play, at the end, the election has been conducted. 
now what we expect is the result. And what I will encourage and appeal to religious leaders is, especially those who were in the part of the negative world, now just allow the result to decide who wins. Let the result decide who actually emerge. Don't sit and encourage people to be saying things that are not. If you believe so much in prayer, please just go in and be praying. Prayer is supposed not to be screaming on top of people's heads. Prayer is communing with God and asking God to answer and give us the leader we want. If we do that, then we would have helped the system, we would have done well, as uh, we would have shown a good example to others who are listening to us. But hitting up the quality now will not be good uh, for us and will not be good even for those who we think we are helping with them up. All right, uh, Reverend Haya, but it's good you mentioned uh, some um, poly uh, religious leaders who have actually gone uh, further than they should have because uh, there is an ongoing conversation as to uh, the extent to which uh, the religion or religious leaders um, can play in uh, no, the leadership um, uh, making process of the country. Some believe that uh, the, the the role of religious leader should stop at voter education and not exactly advising them exactly uh, who they should vote for. Because uh, we have heard and seen reports where uh, leaders of um, churches and even some mosques uh, have actually told their congregants um, who they should vote for. Is that right? Well, you know, we are coming out from different experiences in this country, and sometimes people react according to their experience. Uh, and then number two, we also have a situation where a larger follower seems not to be well informed, even though they may understand the information or the kind of knowledge that is available about the political process, but they lack certain basic information. As a pastor, I can tell you how many pastors or many Christians were calling me are you our leader? Tell us where to go. Tell us who to vote for. I try to exercise restraint. I avoid saying it, and I never said it. Uh, but despite that, I still have been some voters, some people who thought that I said they should vote for this one because as a religious leader, we are trying to warn them against this. Uh, the political, the politicians will now feel if what you are using in warning your people against the candidate they should vote will not suit them, then you are actually telling your candidate the candidate they should vote, or your people the candidate they should vote. But I'm not sure many religious. Ever I had some pastors even say vote for someone who has a Christian name or vote someone who go to the mosque. Well, that is the way they think they will do. But I want to believe that the people are informed to a level that things the voter, the, the voters card belongs to them. And they are that single person that will enter into the voting place and complain, not his pastor, not the elder of his church who is taken. So we must give people that respect of that independence and privacy. We, for Khan, what I know Khan did was that Khan says this is the quality of the leader we should vote for. If you find in all those available someone with that quality, vote for him. If you do not find someone with that quality, don't vote for him. When someone starts judging us that, no, by saying that quality, you already refer them to who to vote, then they are not being honest because uh, that means you are also, they are also accepting that their candidate is not good. Because if your candidate is good and possesses the right quality, we've talked about quality, and quality is not a like name, it's not name and name of party, it's just the quality of the person. So there were this also mixed up around. And there are some pastors who even preach and said that if you don't vote for a particular candidate, you won't vote for heaven. I came out publicly and I reflected that, and I told them that there's no thing about going to heaven when it comes to voting. Uh, people are just voting for their leaders, and let's allow them to express their freedom, let's allow them to their choice, and not start mixing our theology, except mixing my theology or complete together. So how am I going to be correcting that? So I cannot have a theological position just for election, and a theological position after election. No. My theology about salvation stands the day I gave my life to just Christ until today, I'm going to leave this act. So I'm not going to confuse my followers, I'm not going to confuse those I teach to them. Some of them may not understand. Someone may misrepresent the issue, but the truth stands. Because when you meet me and I want to explain to you, I'm telling you not to vote for candidate A or Z or E, but simply vote for people who have social quality because they will deliver the good, they will salvage Nigeria, they will take Nigeria to the promised land. Uh, the church did that. But we also have people in the church who actually name and mention name. Uh, I'm not going to start judging them, but I will then do what they did because I feel when people come to church, they didn't come to church for me to decide 
the name of the wife they are going to marry. It's simply for me to guide them on the path of truth and on the path that will lead them to heaven. And in understanding that they will know which wife suits that lifestyle, which government suits that lifestyle. But when I start telling them, you must marry Esther or you must marry Grace, then I'm going out of hand. Or you must vote for J or vote for B, then I'm going, I'm going out of uh, the boundary. So I have to know my boundary, and my boundary is to inform and guide. And we did that religiously. All right, you said that you know your boundaries, that you should just uh, be um, um, a guide or a guardian, as it were, you know, to your sheep and your flock, your against those um, who actually look up to you as a uh, sense of direction. But what would you really say? Most people are of the opinion that some um, school of thought believes that um, the country would actually uh, be headed in the right direction if uh, more uh, religious leaders, as it were, you know, vie for political office, um, positions in Nigeria. Do you agree? Well, you see, the Bible says that uh, uh, it, it is God that calls some to be prophets, some apostles, some to be teachers, some to be administrators, and some to be counselors. Uh, for the equipment of God's uh, kingdom or God's service, um, properly guiding people for righteousness. So what that verse simply says is that God has a different calling for different people. Uh, I may not be a good governor, but I can be a good preacher. I may not be a good preacher, but I can be a good counselor. I may not be a good counselor, but I can be a good uh, mobilizer. So when people know where they are and their role, it will help us well. In this world and in this country, we must have people to just come out and exhibit their gifting, but not asking them to do what is not their calling. Uh, a pastor who probably knows how to mobilize may not really do the, uh, uh, the leadership himself. He could mobilize people to choose a leader but he cannot be the leader because if you give him then you will see a lot of mistakes in many of the christian gatherings i went through this election campaign period what i told them is that i am i cannot i i don't agree that uh, i will take my car to someone who's not a mechanic just because that person is of my religion or that person is of my tribe a mechanic that knows his job i will give my car to him and trust him to repair my car when i go to the airport to board a flight to london or board a flight to lagos or board a flight to the us or anywhere in part of the world i am not going to board a flight because the pilot is a christian or the pilot is a Muslim or the pilot is a pastor and one of the illustrations is that if you go to board a flight and they said okay sorry the pilot is not feeling fine but since your pastor is here your pastor can just go in and take up the flight and take it to where you are going and you know that your pastor is not a pilot will you board that flight so because I'm a pastor does not mean I can be a governor, I can be a president. But if you are a pastor and you have that gift of being governor or being president, please go ahead and do. After all, in the first place, you are a Nigerian before you become a Christian and before you become a pastor. So as a Nigerian, you have a civil responsibility to make this country move, to make this country grow. I have seen imams who are in government, I've seen pastors who are in government. Some performed excellently well, others didn't do well. But because the other person did not do well, do not show that every pastor cannot do it or every imam cannot do it. it only simply said that he didn't really uh, do a self-assessment to know why is it that I can perform, what is it that I can deliver. Myself, if there are jobs I know how to do, there are jobs I don't know how to do. So if a pastor knows that he can deliver and represent the people well, why not? He is a citizen. He has the right to vote and be voted for. All right, uh, good one, uh, uh, Reverend Joseph Hyer. But let's... Uh talk further about um, actions of um, these uh, religious leaders because uh, just before we went to polls um, yesterday, there were lots of uh, prophecies as it were, you know, lots of people felt they were misguided because uh, their pastors, uh, their imams had told them that uh, this particular candidate will eventually uh, emerge a winner of this election. Do you really think the, uh, the religious leaders should be doing that? Well, I have just been explaining to you that our calling and giftings are different. There are some who believe they are prophet, there are some who believe in seeing vision and whatever it is. And sometimes these visions are probably for their consumption, but they want to share with people. If they are doing it to show that they are powerful spiritually, then it is unfortunate. If they are doing it to get attack attention, it's also unfortunate. But if truly they are convinced that God actually spoke to them and tell them and they are sharing what God told them, then it is right. But let me quickly put this very clear. If a pastor claimed to have prophesied and the prophecy do not come to pass, he put his name into ridicule 
he put the name of his faith into ridicule. So as a pastor, you must be careful what you say. And if you want to say it, don't say God said. You could say that from my from available indices, from available uh, statistics, from available reports we are receiving, it seems so no person could may win. But when you say God told you, and it turns out to be the man do not win, then you will look stupid and you will make your faith a laughing stock. I don't want to subscribe to that. The fact is that I have always tell people that pastors who think that same prophecy makes them great pastors uh, do not even know exactly what they are doing. It's only in Nigeria that any time we have elections, you hear people saying this pastor prophesied, that that imam prophesied as prophecies. To me, I know politics is about mobilizing, mobilizing people. If you like prophesy 1,000 times, if you do not mobilize people to vote for that man, the man will not win. Politics is about the person people to vote for. You could even have a whole year vision. If you do not come out to vote for the man you want, the man will not win. So I want to appeal to religious leaders who play to the gallery sometimes, or who want to show as if they are more powerful, they hear from God, to know that God loves everybody. And there is nobody that God hates. So your prophecy will not change God's plan for the other person. You may prophesy that this one wins, and then God can decide to give the person you prophesy again to be the winner. You will be the one to be the shame. So right. I will always tell people, look at the available statistics. If you are convinced, support the person. If you are not convinced, support what your conscience tells you. But to say that God told me this man will be this, this man will be that, and then without clarity. And that's why every day you see the prophecy is inconsistent. Today he prophesied this, tomorrow he prophesied. Sometimes they are even trying, uh, let me say, try your luck. When they say something, they hope that that thing will happen. When anything near it happens, then they start telling you, you see, the prophecy is not fulfilling. Which in reality, there is no attachment, there is no connection connection between what they say and the prophecy that has happened. But since we manipulate people's mind and want to play game with them, it's unfortunate that people from the profession or from the call I belong, some of us do that mistake. I say it's unfortunate, but I also do believe that God speaks to people. But if God is going to speak to people, you will have a witness. All right, well, a very big thank you to you, Reverend Joseph Hayab, uh, the Ken Chairman from Kaduna State. Thanks for all of um, the inputs that you have brought um, to Ballot 2023. We do appreciate them. Thank you very much for having me. And I pray that Nigeria should just be patient and wait for the results. A winner will eventually emerge. And we will work together to make Nigeria what we want Nigeria to be. Thank you and God bless. Yes, God bless you too. Uh, joining us live right now is the national leader of Afeni Ferry, uh, Pa Ayo Adibanjo. Uh, good afternoon to you, Pa Adibanjo. Thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, pa Adibanjo, please, can you unmute your device? All right, uh, it's the ballots 2023. We'll take a quick break and we'll try and see if we can reconnect with Pa Ayo Adibanjo in a moment to join us again. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.